The first thing I'm going to need to do with this retro chair is take off the back here and I have already removed the screws underneath. There's two little little pieces here that had screws holding it in so you won't see me do that on camera. I was doing it last night because I lost the screws to the first one anyway and I was looking at the size. Now that I've got the insulation off, I just need to measure, and I'm showing you guys, but I've already done all this. And what I did was measure at these midpoints all the way. It'd be better if I had my little um, seamstress tape measure, but I don't know where it is. So I measured across there, kind of going midpoint on each side. And then I did the same at the bottom, the top and the bottom. And um, I wrote down my measurements and made up a plan of how I wanted to do the fabric. And this part is, is a lot of trial and error. You want to go big on your um, pattern measurements so that if you make a mistake, you can downsize. I wasted a lot of fabric on the first one, so my recommendation is go bigger and work your way in. You're going to be, you're going to see that I'm going to be sewing and taking this on, putting it on and taking it off and sewing again. And it's just um, the way I did the first one, just to get everything perfect. I tried several different ways. I even tried making a gusset to fit this, and it just did not work. After two or three times of trying that, I gave up, and I did it a different way, which I'll show you guys in this video. But um, I've got my measurements. I've got all the vinyl off. I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to start working on the piece that I want to fit over this. Okay. Based on my measurements, I've got my fabric here and I've turned it with um, right sides facing together. I just did a fold over instead of doing two separate pieces because that's what worked for me. So now I just need to seam along the sides and I'm going to work my way in until I get the perfect fit. So this may not look like it's the perfect fit, but it actually is. This is has a curve, a curvature to it, but once I start pulling down and stapling, all of that's gonna fit nicely to the to the chair backing. And these little corners, I could not figure out what I wanted to do with them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch them down and put some cute little buttons on the side there. So it looks like it's on purpose. So there you have it. Looks kind of messy like that um, right now, but once I put the fabric over the top and get that on there, that's going to look really neat. You're not going to see any of those staples. So the next step is to stitch these corners down and add buttons. Removing the cushion of the chair is fairly simple. It's just four screws in this chair and every chair is different so you know all I can tell you is have patience. It's worth it because this is so much fun. I am really enjoying redoing chairs. I have 
four other chairs in there that I need to get to but I decided I wanted to do these first because I love that Nightmare Before Christmas fabric that I have to cover the cushion. And that is all it is to that. Now I'm not going to film the process of taking all these staples off because there's so many of them. But um, the one thing I will say is the reason that I take the time to remove each and every staple instead of just ripping the piece off is because we have carpet. And we also have little my little grandbabies who come over occasionally. And I just don't want them to end up stepping on a staple. So I would rather take the time to take each and every one out and make sure it's not flying all over the room. And again, with this being um, vinyl, I, I think the old um, batting or insulation is in great shape. So I'm going to leave it on here. It's molded to it, so it, it's perfect for the project. Okay, so I've got this Nightmare Before Christmas fabric, and I've already cut it out. And I like to go a little extra. I didn't want to go too extra with this because this fabric is really expensive and hard to find. I make sure it's nice and smooth and I've got it laying on top here and I'm gonna flip it over and this is gonna be the back of the chair and I know this because of the screw holes and what I'm gonna do is I tend to get so into my work that I forget and I cover these screw holes and they are really hard to find again so I'm marking them with a pencil no big deal it's going to be underneath the chair Alrighty, there you have it. You can see that I've got everything laying down nice and smooth. Now all I have to do is put the chair back together. Alrighty y'all, here's our finished chair. I love the way it turned out. They both turned out so nice. It's got a great look to it. it. Updated it a little bit, but we still got this retro feel. I was able to use all of the original hardware. The only thing that I did do was to replace the stoppers at the ends of the legs, which I got at Lowe's. And I haven't put those on yet, but um, I'll do that when I get ready to sell them. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial, how-to, whatever you want to call it. Peace, y'all. Bye.